Now we'll see how to write SQL queries on custom objects. The steps are pretty much the same as we saw in the standard objects. Identify the objects, identify the relationships, design a child to parent SQL query, design a parent to child SQL query. While the steps are the same, there is a slight difference in the syntax for the relationship query on custom objects. That's why I have made a separate video on custom objects. So let's get started. In an earlier video, we had created these two custom objects keychain bookings and keychain models and there is a relationship between these two objects in order to study these two objects let's head over to the schema builder so go to setup type in schema builder in the quick find box and open the schema builder if you have not followed along with my previous videos and have not created these custom objects just go and select any custom objects which exist in your playground and try to follow along in this video and write a SQL query using the custom objects that you have available with you or you can go ahead and create these custom objects in order to find the custom objects in your org go to select from and select from custom objects so here you can see all the list of custom objects if you have done some trailhead exercises and installed some packages you may have some custom objects available already in your trailhead playground or the development org that you are using all right so we are going to write a query selecting the fields from keychain booking custom object and we will select the quantity the account name and the keychain model name. This means we'll be writing a SQL query on a custom object with a lookup to a standard object and a lookup to a custom object. Now in your schema builder, if you're not able to see the element names, which means you should be able to see this underscore underscore C showing that it is a custom object. If you don't see this, head over to view options and instead of display element labels, click on display element names. If you're displaying element labels, it will show you just the field labels and the object label. We are interested in the API names, so we need to see the element names. Okay, so using this, we can now start designing our SQL query. So let's open the developer console. In the query editor, we'll start writing our SQL query. So select, now the field names, we want booking date and booking quantity from keychain booking underscore underscore C. Okay, let's select those fields. If you don't want to type the query, you can open the object, object, find keychain booking. It displays all the fields, select the fields that you want by pressing the control key. So we want booking quantity, booking date and click on query. So it says select ID booking quantity underscore underscore C booking date underscore underscore C from keychain booking underscore underscore C. The last part of the object name underscore underscore C identifies it as a custom object and custom fields with that we created on the custom object. Let's execute this query and we have the results from a single custom object. So now that we have managed to write a query on a single custom object, let's extend this query to write the relationship and fetch the account name in the query results. So to fetch the account name, we'll write account dot name. This is what we had done when we were writing a SQL relationship query between two standard objects, account and contact. And it worked fine if you see the previous video. Let's see what happens when we try to do the same thing on a custom object. So execute this and gives us an error. Didn't understand relationship account in field path. If you are attempting to use a custom relationship, be sure to append the underscore underscore R after the custom relationship name. Now, though, although account is a standard object, the relationship we have created is a custom relationship. We can see that if we look at the schema browser and we see in our custom object keychain booking underscore underscore C, the account lookup field is a custom field account underscore underscore C. So we need to append underscore underscore R in the query in order to fetch the data. Now let's try to execute it and it brings us the account name, right? So we have the ID of the keychain booking, the quantity, the booking date, and the account name has been fetched. Now we also want to fetch the keychain model name. So again, we uh, do the same thing. We study the lookup field that has been created. It's keychain model underscore underscore C. That's a lookup on the keychain model. Let's view this relationship. Go to the schema builder, click on view object that opens up the object in object manager. 
click on fields and relationships and our lookup on keychain model that's the field for lookup on keychain model the lookup field name is key underscore chain underscore model underscore underscore c click on that field we can see the child relationship name in plural so let's go back to the schema builder let's open the developer window and since keychain model is also a parent relationship if you uh, hover over the relationship link you can see it is a lookup relationship from keychain booking to keychain model one keychain model can have many bookings so keychain model is the parent and keychain booking is the child so we are writing a child to parent sockel query hence we would be using keychain model underscore underscore r not c r dot name from keychain booking that's the driving object let's execute this and we are able to retrieve the keychain model name also from the parent object so that's how we write a sockel relationship query from child to parent next we are going to write a parent to child query so this time we're going to select from keychain model and that will be the driving object for the sockel query so let's remove all the fields and the object we are selecting from is keychain model so the fields that we want are select id name of the model so select id and name from the model let's execute this simple query first execute we have the id and name now we are trying to fetch all the bookings for each model in order to do that you will be writing a sub query on the child object select id name booking date underscore underscore c booking quantity underscore underscore c so those are the fields we have selected from the keychain booking object so we'll write from keychain booking underscore underscore c let's execute this query that again gives us an error because even in the parent to child query when you are using the subquery for a relationship object which means there is a relationship that we are trying to utilize between keychain model and keychain booking and trying to retrieve objects from the relationship not from the object itself hence you have to use underscore underscore r and if we execute this it still gives us an error now in, or, in order to understand this error we'll go back to viewing the object in the schema builder view object keychain bookings go to the keychain model field and if you see the relationship name is keychain bookings plural so go back to the developer console let's make this plural now execute we have another error okay there's a typo we our object name is key underscore chain underscore booking so if we add that underscore here and then execute so this time it does show us all the result now simply writing a sockel query retrieving a list of bookings may not make sense by itself but when we start using these sockel queries in our apex classes and methods that's where we will be able to automate some of our business processes using the data that we retrieve in sockel query so for those automations sockel query would be basically the building blocks that you will be using as a salesforce developer i hope these three videos on sockel queries were useful to you and do subscribe to this channel and hope to see you in the next videos